You see out here, street style, it's everything. Show them who's in charge. It's the takeover. They call me Lacey, can don't play no more. I'd rather put money on my grandmother. I ain't got the money, I ain't got the bullets either. I ain't got the money since I've been vegan. I ain't got the season. Try to pay before the season. Probably ducked up in a quiet place with your pussy. Try to shake, probably like you couldn't see it. Hey, you driving like you stole it. I like your style. I would like to get a chance to the scar on my face. All the stars in the club. Put it your scar face. That's how you do it. See, I was rooting for you too, man. You made me proud. Good evening, folks. It is Saturday night. We are in the last week of the regular season. I am your host, Ice Cold Brew. Joining me in the commentary booth is, of course, Silver. Silver, how are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Uh, we, we've got some great matches tonight and uh, excited to see some more Rocket League. Yeah, I think it's safe to say the stakes are are high on this one and how do you like those steaks preferably medium well well done <laughs> wooden I'm, I'm, metal <laughs> I'm, I'm not i'm not quite too sure on that one but i'm very excited for the matches that we've got high stakes as you've said and uh hopefully we see some uh, amazing plays from these players i i'm inclined to agree so we're gonna have the paladins versus the goblins two folks from two squads from the dungeon division and it is going to be very interesting to see them. They're going to be playing to see who is going to be heading off to playoffs. And on the field, we're going to have Rustic Rebel. And they're going to go by the name Glizzy on this. But this is actually a grassy dude. But they're called the Glizzy right now. So that's going to be confusing. And then over on the Goblin side, we're having Violet, Akuma, and Grey Alien. Two top level players. One of them hanging out in the chat right now. Big Country. Uh, any any particular way you feel about these teams going in? Um, not really. Um, I'd just like to see some good plays. Um, I have seen uh, Violet uh, play before, and she is very good. So hopefully we some see some great plays. And um, I have, I think, seen Gray as well. So same there. Yeah, Gray and Violet, two of the top contenders on the team. Gray, very well known for the passing plays. As we get ready for these squads, I do want to let folks know we did have some technical difficulties on the back end. And so Pound and Squad will show up with the goblin colors on the scorecard. But we know they're the Paladins. We know they are these great Crusaders from their division ready to go. And the goblins will show up as the Paladins. And while they may not be the Royal Knights we are waiting for, we know they are ready to start their raid on the field in the meantime let's go ahead and get these folks ready to play i'm i'm feeling like the goblins might have this in the bag just based on the numbers of violet akuma and gray alien but grassy dude and rustic they have some chemistry together grassy dude only playing two series has a uh has only been in for eight games but rustic 17 games total nine for eight trying to keep this team alive. It's going to be interesting to see how they play together and what kind of plays they're going to pull out, what what the movement on the field is going to look like as we get ready here. Yeah, here we go. First kickoff of the game. Let's, uh, you know, ho hopefully we'll get some good plays. Violet's going to go off the ceiling and give us one as that's going to be the first goal of the game. What a fantastic shot by Violet. She puts that one straight into the back of the net for the first goal for the, um, I'm forgetting. Goblins. What team that is? Goblins. Yes. My <laughs> bad on that one. <laughs> so that's something that you called too. Violet Akuma is very comfortable a uh, foreign and princess league player you can see her just jump off the side of the wall immediately challenge but now you got rustic getting into a little bit of a rebellious phase but unfortunately glizzy throw that threw that ball down the center and gray just needed to send a line drive right down the middle of the field it's immediately a two goal lead and folks it doesn't matter whether it's three oh sweep or a three two series whichever one of these teams wins 
will go to playoffs. So right now it's not looking good for the Paladins. No, it is not. And the Paladins definitely need to come back here with some offense of themselves. It was Rustic almost gets that one off of Violet's hood there. And just a great play again from the Goblins. Violet putting that one off of the side. And just back out to Gray. He's going to have a shot here. Good shot there, but Galizzi just has that one. Yeah, I tried to hook it in. Violet Akuma, more control than most players at the moment, able to take it around. Rustic and Glizzy have a chance. Glizzy can't find the ball, so Violet's going to boom it away. Gray looking to pick it up. Rustic with the 50, force that ball to stay on the Goblin side, and they're going to carry it around. You got Gray slowing it down. They have the lead. They can play this game however they want, and he's going to pop it up high, carry it through for the third goal, second goal for him. Yeah, great play by Gray, taking it slow and then going fast as he can to put that one over the Paladins defense. And we've got we've this this looks like a, a blowout in game one, but you know the, these players are still getting used to uh, each other and how they play, and they they definitely probably have played each other in the season before. But Gray's gonna put another one into the back of the net four to zero for the goblins as they take a very very convincing lead here in game one yeah and typically in stream games you see a lot of times teams feel uncomfortable they're just testing the waters a lot goblins just immediate quick assault you already have a hat trick out of gray getting a bump as he rotates out with that boost akuma is gonna flick it pop it up high that's a pass over to rustic it's probably the Big first play, Akuma, Violet Akuma with a demo on Grassy Dude will deny this offensive push from the Paladins. And one thing I kind of want folks to notice here is recognize how Violet and Gray are moving with each other versus how Glizzy and Rustic are moving. Rustic and Glizzy have been in line and they aren't controlling the ball as well. Violet and Akuma, when they recognize they have space, they take their time. They have all the time in the world. It does not matter what's going on in that front field where the paladins are they just need to hold on to it force to bait them out and then take charge good demo by glizzy to get the save yeah it, they they definitely do take charge when they uh when they have the ball and they they make the most with their uh their opportunities there's another one coming out gray's gonna get that one saved by rustic fantastic work on the back line for the paladins as the fifth goal is denied but there might not be a there might be a fifth goal here but Grassy dude's going to hit that one out, back out to Violet, and this is just going to go back into the Paladin's corner, but Rustic is having none of that, puts it upfield, and Gray's just going to have a touch there to get it past. Grassy's kind of getting a little weird there on the back line, and that one's going to go back out. Violet has another shot. A fantastic work there, but just not going to get the finishing touch, and... Uh, yeah, we've kind of got a midfield game here. Bit of a midfield game. I'm still putting all the pressure on the side of the Goblins. Outside of the four-goal lead that they currently have, it feels like they're getting in the way. They're playing right. Anytime there's a sense of just handling the ball, but Rustic sniper shot one coast to the other. is going to take this for the first goal for the Paladins. Might be the momentum shift that they need in order to bring this game back in control. Yeah, that, that one's definitely dusting off the bolts. He's definitely not rustic after that one, and that's a fantastic play there from his own back line to end up in the back of the net. There might be a, a way back here for the Paladins. It's going to have to happen soon here, though. And two's game, you'll typically see a lot more scoring. Ooh, bit of a quick conversation at the center lane between Glizzy and Rustic, and not really what you, what you want to do when you're in enemy territory. Violet. Tries to slow it down, but Rustic sneaks up, gets a demo. He's going to go for a back pass here. Instead, will immediately be challenged by Gray. Ball floating around. Gray, soft jump more to pull Glizzy out than to get a touch on the ball. And tries to set up Violet Akuma. Ball sailing back to the Goblin side. Instead, Glizzy sees that bounce. A lot of hesitation from Gray leaves a big opening in the net for Glizzy to drop it in for the second goal. 
Yeah, great play there from Glizzy. Fantastic work, fantastic power, and some great accuracy. Is the Paladins are definitely coming back here in game one, and I'd l definitely love to see a comeback just straight off the bat here um, in this series. As both of these teams desperately need to win this series to get into playoffs, and uh, it looks like Glizzy's gonna have a shot, and that one's gonna get saved away, but. Yeah, it, it, it feels to me that if the Paladins don't attack enough, the the uh, Goblins are just going to kind of run with the um, kind of run the clock down. And it's going to be a tough task as time is running out for the Paladins. They need two more. They need it desperately in game one. Um, yeah, and, and Rustic is just going to take this one back in the midfield. And a lot of this is also just making sure your teammate has boost of if you're going to go in one way, you have to leave out the other. Just grab pads on the way around. Don't wait for the bucket of boost. And if not, that's going to slow down your mode of play. Right now, game one is going to go to the Goblins as we're waiting for this ball to get killed. Kuma bringing it down. Gray's going to take the MVP for the three goals he got. But so far, Goblins very quick on the attack were able to shut out the Paladins. Paladins were able to get couple goals towards the last about minute and a half there. But it took them a lot of time to get warmed up. Yeah, it, de it definitely did. And they, they it looked to me like they were going to come back. They had some nice opportunities after that second goal. And it did look like it might be a comeback. But it just was not the case as the Goblins just kind of ran the clock down, as I was uh, kind of saying earlier. And... Uh, you know, the, the Paladins have got something to um, to take away from this game, definitely, and they just need to come back um, a little bit more attacking in, in Game 2, and I, I do think that this is this could go either way still. So. Yeah, I think a, one thing that's going to help them out in the long run is just playing the field a little bit more, widen out the, the angles, don't be in the same lane at the same time, you cause a traffic jam that way, and anticipating when the charges from the goblins are coming in right now the goblins are playing on top of the paladins a lot so they need to play a little bit of boom ball or to open up the space give themselves a bit more time and a bit more communication goes a long way we're going to see what they do in game two in order to bring it back because last two goals went in their favor right now goblins are in a drought technically about by about two minutes so they can bring it back and take control of this game as we start off with game two and back with park yeah and violet's gonna have the touch off of her own corner here and it's gonna be back to rustic he's not gonna have the greatest touch but glizzy is he puts that one over what a fantastic shot there from glizzy and the paladins are back mm -hmm. and let's look at the angle from glizzy glizzy recognizes that ball is popping up high just needs to turn in Perfect time to jump. Just enough of a touch to get it behind the defender. And now Paladins will take the first goal. And Glizzy's going to look for the second one. Bit of a bump and grind going on on the side between Gray and Rustic. But Grassy Dude right now goes to challenge Gray. Gets a bump on him instead of the ball. But that's a lot of open space. That's a lot of clear-cut grass before Rustic is able to get that save. Ball heading over across the field. Yeah, and Glizzy's going to have a shot at this. Maybe a double tap, a close shot from Glizzy there. Definitely looked like he was going to have the second touch. Could not quite get it. Misses the boost here. He's going to put it up into the corner. Maybe a pass over his teammate. Gets blocked over by Gray. And Vila's also going to go for that one as it goes into the Paladin's corner. They clear that one out. Rustic looked like he was trying to go for the demo there. Vila with the shot. A fantastic work there, but it just goes off of the side post there, and it's going to go right back to the Goblins. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, good demo on Gray. Leaves Akuma alone for a little bit now. Ball centered. Violet can't get a second touch on it. Lizzie is going to take this chance, slots it right in front of Gray, who just came back in on respawn. And Paladins right now. In formation on the attack. Fantastic start for Glizzy in particular. Two for three so far. Yeah, some great work from Glizzy. And the Paladins are coming back here in the series, it looks like. And they they are not letting the Goblins 
return kind of scathed from game one and you know they they got their two goals but you knew always that they were gonna get game two here and it does look like it but Vila's gonna have a shot here on glizzy he's gonna save that one out go back to gray oh maybe over but rustic gets a good touch and it's gonna go right back to the midfield Violet's gonna have a shot here get blocked by glizzy again glizzy might have the touch over he does Fantastic work there, but just could not get the second touch as his teammate wasn't there. Great save there on the goal line for the Paladins and the the relentless flesh, uh, pressure from the go uh, the Goblins continues. Yeah, right now Goblins starting to realize they can't give up too much space. Violet's going to chase after this ball. It's on target. Get the piece of it, but Glizzy just had it on target. There's nothing she could do in the moment to deny that ball. It was going to go in. Tried to scoop it out, but fantastic angle from Glizzy. Third goal out of four shots. And right now, one thing I point out about the Goblins is they've given up a lot of space and they've lost a lot of that pressure. They lost a lot of that momentum they had in game one. And it feels like they're unsure of how to adjust right now. And a lot of times in twos, it's you've got to learn how to adjust around your teammate and play according to the tempo and speed of your opponents so far there's a lot of open space through the mid lane between rustic and glizzy glizzy with a deep rotation right now rustic almost gets it over akuma fantastic save and able to take it down and around akuma's going to pick it up didn't really wait for the control pops it up high anyways back into the corner it goes for the paladins one more chance ball centered gray with the big boom sends it all the way back over to the paladin side and Gray's going to have a shot here. Doesn't have the power to get over Glizzy. Glizzy's going to go again. Violet Akuma goes for that challenge. Gets a piece of it. It's not going to get the better piece of it. As it goes right back to the Paladins. Gray's going to have a touch here. Might be back to Rustic. It does. And that is the fourth goal for the Paladins. Paladins, this is this is definitely a different game than game one. And they, they they're, they're powerhouses right now. Yeah, it just feels a lot more awkward for the Goblins, especially you saw Violet Akuma was facing towards the back of the net at the center of the goal, which is not really where you want to be for defense. Again, it kind of looks like they're playing a bit too quick to their deficit, but maybe Gray can slot it into the corner. No, just hits the woodwork instead. It's going to roll around to the outside, clear out by the Paladins. Akuma is going to carry it up. Over Glizzy, Rustic, last one back, 50 by Akuma. That's centered a little bit off to the right. Can Gray get there? No, Glizzy, just a bit more faster, just a bit more with alacrity. Ball's going to go towards the net. Akuma gets demoed by Glizzy. It's going to roll upfield. A minute left to go. Can the Goblins get one goal for themselves? And Gray will with the I fantastic mean, yep, little ankle breaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great play there by Gray. Caster's curse for the Paladins, but they're up by three still, and they still look determined to take this game too. But you know, you never know. The Goblins could have a new mindset after this, after that fantastic work there from Gray, and you know, you never know in this game. Anything can happen, and uh, you know, I, I either way, um, yeah, it's just kind of. Looking like Ooh. it's going to go right back to the Goblins here. They might have a chance with Gray. Gray's going to shoot. It's going to get blocked by Rustic there. Fantastic work. That's going to be a center. Going to miss mm. from Violet, sadly. And this is going to go back to Gray. It might be a little bit awkward here, but handles that one with no pressure there. And, uh, yeah. Gray had me a little bit scared there. It looked like he was not going to be able to dip it out in time before getting dunked on but able to find a path has to sacrifice himself to do it. Six seconds left to go. Violet Akuma maybe wants one more for the road, tries to fake out Rustic, but Rustic's going to boom it, and that ball's going to hit the ground. Bit of a trade-off here and a reverse almost in the scoring line. Paladin's doing a little bit better defensively. Four saves out of the seven shots from the Goblins, and they found four goals out of the eight shots of their own, too. Yeah, it's just... Um... It, 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 it was just, you know, I, I, there's not really a quantity over quality in this game. It's just whoever can get 
those finishing touches that are maybe a little bit more you know powerful or precise that that's what you really need in rocket league and that that is exactly what the paladins did in that game too and that is exactly why they are back in the series and I, I, I can see Game 3 going either way now. Yeah, Game 3 is just going to be who makes more obvious mistakes. And this one, it was a lot of positioning errors for the Goblins. It was a lot of just not putting enough power behind the ball, getting dunked on, not anticipating the quick challenges from the Paladins. And the same way they quickly challenged the, go- the Paladins for the Goblins in Game 1. So it's going to be a bit of a trade-off back and forth. I imagine we could even go to game five, but whoever can recognize these mistakes and fix them first will be able to take the series as Gray gets that kickoff. Ball center, Violet Akuma can't get it on target. Instead, tries to back pass to Gray, who will pick it up and pop it up high for one more chance. Yeah, and I would also say that being determined to win and you know having that fantastic mindset that all fantastic you know rocket league players rlcs have that that mindset is crucial in games like this and tough tough matchups and you know things that you know if 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 you lose then you're out so Mm -hmm. uh you know we'll we'll just kind of have to see as the series goes on but these teams look very very determined to win this series and they do not want to be kicked out of um the league here for playoffs and uh they they both desperately want to get this playoff spot yeah keep in mind folks al jl and el all have teams who can be knocked out of playoffs and lose their chance and so far again just to remind you of the stakes Whichever team, oh, Gray has an open net opportunity, just drops it in. Rustic with the miss, fantastic opening. And there is the first mistake from the Paladins here. You got Glizzy and Rustic, quick bump at the half court. Glizzy with the miss touch. Rustic tries to recover, but doesn't get back in position in time. Instead, ball slotted far right side by Gray. Yeah, that's just a tough one to, uh, to see go past you there. As uh, it's just an open net for Gray, he had no problem with that one. Akuma's gonna have a shot of his own, but uh, yeah, just tough play there. Glizzy's gonna get back though in the game for the Paladins. Great play there. I forget who actually got demoed there. I th- yeah, I think it was Gray, and you know, Glizzy just puts that one into the back of the net with no opposition seen. And that was just unfortunate for Violet Akuma. She was just a bit too far upfield to be able to do anything about it. Gray got caught out by a very aggressive defender. And that demo was what gave Glizzy that chance to carry it through. Gray is going to take another crack at a shot, but Rustic will pick up a save. And to finish my statement from earlier before Gray's goal, whichever team wins here will be playing in playoffs in the coming weeks. As we get ready to go, Violet Akuma, fantastic demo. Gray, able to get it around Glizzy, does not want to be dunked on in that moment. It was about to be posterized for a second. Gray centers at midfield, but Glizzy with the miss. A lot of time for that ball to roll into the corner. Maybe Akuma can send it out to Gray. A bit too far, a bit too hard, a bit too fast, and a bit too furious for that play to work out. Yeah, just, you know, there might be a little bit of nerves here as well in this series, 100%, because of the stakes. Um, I do think that both these teams are determined, so the nerves are going to come out in the game. And Gray's going to have a shot here, very powerful, but just off of the backboard. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, a lot of a lot of emotions can go into these sort of games as it's win or lose, and uh, especially for a playoff spot. But Violet Akuma is going to have a shot here, going to get blocked by Glizzy, and Rustic's going to hit this one upfield. And Glizzy going to take it out away from Gray, but that might have actually just been a pass. Gray off the crossbar. It goes down. Violet Akuma having some issues. Stopped moving on the corner. Oh, no. I think there might be a disconnect issue happening on the Goblin side. Gray might be in a 1v2 situation now. Rustic's going to send that back into the corner. Gray waiting. Has to try to force this 1v2 play to work out. As that ball goes around, Gray gives up a lot of space. Ball centered. Glizzy takes the pass from Rustic. It's going to drop it in. Violet Akuma 
just connecting in the moment. Yeah, that's really unfortunate there for the goblins. And they just take advantage of the paladins. And uh, hopefully Violet gets her internet going very soon as it happens immediately. And Violet is back in the match. Ooh, Violet joining quickly before the goal is scored right after the kickoff. But Gray is going to get a save here. Able to deny the shot from Glizzy. They have plenty of time to catch up. They just have to play quick and they have to play smart. Glizzy, bit too far off to the side. It goes. Violet Akuma is going to take that boost. Rustic's chasing after it. Calls himself off. Recognizes Akuma could beat there. Gets a demo on Rustic Rebel at the back line. Can Gray oh. get a piece of it? Gets bumped by Glizzy. And a double commit from the Goblins will cost them this offensive opportunity as Gray steps back to pick up some boost. Yeah, it's just unfortunate they're both there at the same time. And the whole plan there for the Goblins was completely shut down as they hit each other by accident. And it does not matter because Violet's going to take this one over one defender. Can she do it for the second one? No, because Rustic is going to make the save, and Gray's going to have a shot here. Great play there. A fantastic play by Violet there, but just could not get enough power on those shots, and it just goes right back to Paladins. The Goblins have only 15 seconds to get back into the game, and it does look like it might just be kind of shut off here from the Paladins. And uh, it's going to go... <gasps> That's very close. Um, it looked oh, like... Oh, oh. Just not enough time. The ball hits the ground and Paladins take their second of the series. Yeah, and Paladins... A bit of a lucky break there. That disconnect opened up the opportunity, forced Gray into a 1v2 situation that he could not control. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out to the gifted subs just dropped off right now by Not The Real Caden. Thank you very much for the five gifted. But going back to the gameplay, Rustic Rebel, six saves in this one, denied basically every single shot from Gray, more than half uh, denied from his work alone. Gray and Violet Akuma need to start a comeback, but. At this moment, Paladins on match point, they could be going to playoffs. Yeah, they definitely could be. Very unfortunate, like you were saying, for the Goblins. Goblins had 11 shots to the Paladins' four. I mean, that, that could tell you something as well. Um, quantity over quality um, is, was not really needed for the Paladins. They just had the better chances, maybe a little bit more power, like I was saying, in game two. And uh, the Paladins are on the doorstep of making it into playoffs. They only need one more game. Can they do it, ICB? If outside factors do not interfere, I think they have an opportunity. I also need them to score a goal first. They need to play aggressive. They need to be in the face of the Paladins. They Paladins cannot have a moment to breathe because right now they've garnered their strength. They have set themselves up for the attack and now they just need to strike a killing blow and they have that in their momentum right now. Glizzy specifically, Grassy Dude, has been doing fantastic work overall. Very, very strong work on the offensive and Rustic Protecting that back line is so important in this twos match at this level for Apprentice League. And there are going to be less mistakes like that double commit from the Goblins to give them a chance to win as we start off on game four. Match point for the Paladins. Yeah, Violet Akuma is going to take this one around. Maybe over Rustic. Rustic is going to be there, though. Gray gets a shot. It was right back into the corner. Glizzy is going to take this one out. For the Paladins, Violet on the wall, trying to get the touch off the ceiling, couldn't quite get to that one. Violet's going to have another touch here. Maybe over, but gets demoed in the process, and that's going to be a goal for the Goblins. A great play for the Goblins, but I mean, it, it didn't really look like it was going to be. It looked like it was going to be the opposite, because... Uh, Violet gets demoed in the midfield, and that one, that one, very tricky. Mm -hmm. Very tricky indeed. Violet Akuma 
fantastic setup to the play, that smoke screen. And I do have to give a shout out to Gray as well. Gray reading the field, use that smoke screen to the advantage because recognize the Paladins were slowing down, had to charge in to get that goal. They are able to get the first goal in this. And now they can just hold on tight, focus on smart positioning on the back line, good rotations, and just not giving a lot of space to folks like Glizzy. They can take this game and force into a game five situation. Ball deflected off the back post. Violet Akuma's still forward momentum. Rustic Rebels, last one back, jumps up. Mechanical failure. Ball's just going to roll right on in. No one's going to touch it as it drops in. Wow, that's very unfortunate there. And, you know, you just hate to see the backflip in that situation. There's a lot of stuff riding on that save, and it's kind of like... I mean, it's not really like it, but somewhat like an open net just in general. And, you know, that there, there's a lot of things that can go wrong on that sort of play, and it really can hurt you. But, man, what a great shot by Glizzy. He's just going to hit the crossbar. But, you know, the Paladins are knocking on the doorstep, and they are definitely not out of this game yet. Man, one thing I want to point out is Gray saw Akuma's already back, ready for the defensive effort instead opted to steal boost from rustic rebel now rustic starved in the moment gray oh wanted to drop that ball low send it up too high instead you already have akuma waiting at the back line goes to play defense booms it upfield lizzie again no boost rustic low boost akuma's getting taking a shot but it's going to get saved and that's going to head off the backboard by the paladin sometime bit of a miss by glizzy they have a chance at the half court Ooh, Grace charging in. Ball sent off the corner. Can Glizzy center it? No, double commit again from the Paladins this time. Yeah, those double commits are really getting the Paladins here in game four. And they they really just need to start figuring out the rotation a little bit better here. Or they are going to get hurt on the counterattack every single time. Um, those can be de mm -hmm. definitely detrimental in twos and... I would say in threes definitely as well, but you know, it, it's 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 looking kind of dire for the Paladins at this point. It just looks to me like the Goblins kind of just have this one under their belt, but I, I, you know, anything can happen, and as Glizzy goes up for this one, there might be a chance. And yeah, right now, Rustic hasn't really been able to have such a strong defensive showcase. As I say this, he gets a th savior on this one. But, ooh, they have a dangerous double commit, but Akuma is still going back. Right now, a lot of these plays, very fortunate save by Gray, able to deny the shot from Glizzy. Akuma's on the breakaway now. Oh, Ball denied, my. sent off to the back side of the post. Gray is going to drop it down. And going back to what I was saying earlier, right now it's going back to what I mentioned before, which is which team makes the more mistakes. And right now, Paladins have made plenty of them. A lot of double commits, a lot of missed touches that they should easily get. A lot of panic on the back line is costing them this game in the moment as we hit that one minute mark. But they still have time to recover as long as they do so quickly. Oof. Violet's going to have to... Oh, my... And that looked like it was going to be problematic there for the Paladins, but no luck there on the shot for Violet. And uh, this one's going to be tossed up <gasps> over Rustic by Violet. Gray's going to go to that one, and so is Glizzy. They're going to fight with this one on the Paladins' corner. Going to go back to Violet Akuma. She's going to take this one over. Might be a, a center for Gray. Gray missed the open net. Goes right back to the Paladins, but Violet Akuma is not giving up, and you know it, it does. It does look to me like this might be a win <gasps> for the Goblins. As I say that, it might not be because Paladins come back rustic with a fantastic play there, excellent work there on the air dribble right to rustic off of the backboard, and Paladins are back in it in game four. And I, I got to give Glizzy his due there. That was a fantastic pass out of the corner to pull Gray out. Gray gave a lot of airtime to Glizzy to just even set that up. The fact that Glizzy was able to place it perfectly. Pulls out Gray, forces Violet Akuma trying to make a play, and Rustic with a smart 
soft touch up high to get that goal. Puts them back, once again, in a very familiar position to me in game one, where they scored towards the end as well through some fantastic footwork. Well, tire work on this one. <laughs> but, yeah, Pat Alden's now in a dire situation. Next game goes to playoffs, essentially, for both these squads. Whoever wins here will see themselves on the main stage. Yeah, the, this is this is getting crazy now. Game five, whoever wins goes to playoffs. This is where nerves come out. We're going to see some, hopefully not some backflips and some missed opportunities. Hopefully we'll see some great plays, but the tensions are going to be high. Game five, I mean... This is this is this is this is what it comes down to at the end of the season for these two franchises in Apprentice League, and this is some crazy Rocket League action we've got. Absolutely wild. And one thing I do want to point out, I that's been the difference maker for the Goblins versus the Paladins. Goblins have just been very aggressive and making a plenty of solo plays. They ha do have an assist in this one, but in that first game they did not. Paladins, a lot of their plays have come off of passing plays, assists, setting each other up for success. Who who do you think is going to take game five, and what do you think, Silver, is going to be the difference maker? Um, I, I'm not quite sure who's going to take game five. I think these teams are evenly matched. Um, I think that each game they've played, they've deserved to win for either side, and I think this is definitely a toss-up. Mentality and determination to win this series are going to be the determining factors, and we're, we're going to have to see who comes up with the craziness as Gray gets the save there, but yeah, it, it's just going to have to be, you know, striving to get that game uh, that series and um, getting into playoffs, whoever wants it more. I love that Violet Akuma attempted a doomsday there a little bit, but just pinched the ball a bit too hard against the backboard. I I honestly believe whichever team double commits the least or avoids just communication errors will take this. But more importantly, I've yet to see, I've seen Gray score plenty of times. I would love to see Gray get more assists because he is one of the top leaders in assists for his squad, and if he's able to help set up Akuma, set up Violet Akuma for goals, and disrupt this offensive push from the Paladins, he could have this, but Rustic Rebel's going to take the first goal in uh, off a pass that pops out high over Gray. Fantastic setup so far. Yeah, I mean, a great setup there from Galizzi, and that one goes into the back of the net. A great aerial shot. Um, excellent work there. Goes right into the back of the net. Now, four minutes left to go. First goal going to the Paladins. And if I remember correctly, whichever team has scored first has typically taken the match for themselves. They have a double commit there between Gray and Violet. Violet low on boost in this moment. It's going to have a lot of space to take the ball. It's going to try and get a flick. Gets a pass over to Gray. Can Gray center it? No. Rolled wow. a bit too far. And a lot of miscommunication. Gray has to sprint back, avoids the boost, and Glizzy will get the boost steal to center it once. Never mind, he will miss it entirely. Violet Akuma now with the time and space to carry that ball. Yeah, Glizzy's going to cut that one out. Gray now might be the time for a double tap, but just Ooh. doesn't get the touch. Rustic's going to come out of that one unscathed. Lizzie puts this one right back to Violet. She might have a 50. She does with the Paladins. Glizzy might have a touch here. Goes over. Wow, craziness front in game five. And, oh, Gray has another shot. Going to be off the backboard. You've got a two-on-one here. Now for the Paladins, a pass in middle. Going to be not converted goes off of the backboard for the paladins that definitely would have been a deciding goal there for game five but this might be as gray puts this one into the other side of um the um sorry <laughs> inside the post on the left yeah, side yeah exactly <laughs> I cannot think of the word there, but we've we've got There's a game. There's so much action happening, like it's hard <laughs> it's to say. Crazy. 
Oh my gosh. I love game fives. It's very tense. And as I was saying, we'll just have to see who wants this game more. Yeah. And I have to give a shout out to Gray on that touch. It, you might as well put a pin on the inside post there. That ball on the ground, rolling to the right, able to drop in. Gray has hit the backboard for the third time now. One time only getting in, but that's because it stayed on the ground. Folks, just to remind you, it is currently 2-2 two to two in the series. Next one takes it for themselves. Rustic Rebel going to float up in the air, low on boost right now. Glizzy in the backcourt. Gray wanted to get a piece of it to pass out to center, but just can't make it work out right now. And one thing I'm starting to notice between both squads is they are trying to deprive each other of boost fairly often. Right now, I got Glizzy with 21. We have Rustic low on boost as well. Has to go pick up pass. Tries to back pass to Glizzy. Instead, is going to go into the corner. Gray, ooh, charges a bit too quick. That ball's going to roll into the post and go inside. Lead goes back to Paladins. Wow. This is crazy. Glizzy with the power to get that one over Violet. She could not get back in time and... Paladins take another lead here. Um, this, this we've got a minute thirty almost, and um, th th this game this game is definitely heating up here. As the Paladins might have another chance, but Violet, fantastic work there on the side of the post and gets that one out. That one was definitely tough <gasps> to read, Violet. as most of those are. There might be a shot here, but it's gonna get blocked by Rustic, and uh, Gray's gonna have this one with. 100 boost gonna go back in the middle violet might have a shot and as you were saying it earlier gray gets an assist as he is one of the best assisters i guess is what you could say in al and he shows us why yeah right now i called violet out earlier because i felt she played too far back but she was able to immediately rectify that mistake gray sends it off the side gives it plenty of pop to give violet that space to get a read it takes it in for that goal so far everyone working in tandem gray top of the leaderboard one for two violet one for two as well game's gonna come down to assist everyone's gotten a piece of the pie on the paladin side and also gotten a piece of each other on that rotation out don't think i did not see that rustic and grassy dude Violet Akuma can't sail after the ball. Instead, will float right by Gray on the back foot. Gets bumped by Glizzy. Rustic drops it down. I think Violet has plenty of time to try to center this. It's going to go just outside the post, though. And she's going to step back and wait for it to bounce. Yeah, the, these teams are definitely making their defenses known here. But there, there are a ton of double commits. There might be a shot here from Violet. Gets blocked, though. By Glizzy, there might be a last chance here for the Paladins. Can they get into playoffs? They might do, but Gray's going to have this one. It's going to have to be at a later point. Violet tries to take that one over Rustic. The ball hits the ground. We are in overtime. Game five. Whoever, win, whoever scores next will go to playoffs. The other one is out. There is no better way to have this series end than a 2-2 two to two tie. Glizzy mechanical failure at the back line violet's going to take full advantage of that drops that ball in as gray picks up a second assist here to call the series in the goblins favor wow three to two yeah a lot to unpack here in the series um a close one as you can definitely say some great plays coming out from both sides but the Goblins are victorious, and they will move to on to the playoffs here in RKTU. And uh, man, I'm, I'm that that was a great series. Yeah, it is fascinating to see these teams play as we have a just a fantastic setup going in. Apprentice League taking over on this one, just starting off this evening. Extremely strong, fantastic work overall between all the squads. And what a turnaround by the Goblins. Once we called it out, I called it out earlier, I should say, because I was looking at the stats before this game. Gray needed to start passing a little bit more, and that setup was what the Goblins needed in order to finish off the series. 
Yeah, and he was he was definitely crucial. Gray was, um, and he picked it up with the assist on those last two plays. And I I, I would say is definitely a, a big decider in that game, as was Violet and and the Goblins just came back, and it did look like to me that the Paladins were going to take game five as it kind of looked like it was just going to kind of go back and forth and we need like a game six or like a, mm -hmm. you know, we go to game seven, but you know, that doesn't happen here. And the goblins are victorious.